Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to our Train the Trainer peer-to-peer -peer support mini-series. We have selected five HBCU cohort grantees that have been awarded the campus grant in order to facilitate peer mentorship that resonates in real time. Each of our experienced grantees will be providing you all with an analysis of what it has been like to work under the campus grant, some things that they've succeeded in, some challenges that they've met, um, but all in all, we really want to get their perspective on what has been working and to kind of give some insight to incoming grantees. And so before we dive into everything, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Araba Adu Apal. I am the HBCU specialist here at Ujima Inc. And I would love to introduce my guest today. Um, her name is Dr. Regina Alston. So Dr. Regina, can you just tell us what you do, what your position is. Oh, sure. And it's nice to meet everyone. Great to be on this call. What I do um, is provide advocacy, uh, a safe place, programming uh, for the OBW grant. It's a very needed entity at um, this HBCU, Shaw University. And I um, do all the programming um, for uh, bystander intervention, sexual assault prevention. Um, we have a CCRTT meeting that I facilitate um, basically every month. And we're a real working organism here at Shaw University. Nice. Great. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for telling us a little bit about your role and what you do under the campus grant. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So the first question we'd love to ask you is, what has been your experience with campus programming during your current grant cycle? Who have you been able to co-collaborate with and what has that looked like? Okay, during this um, grant cycle, actually we're, we're in just going into the second year of um, our cycle and what we're doing, um, very much collaboration with, uh, of course, Eugema, uh, making sure that we um, hit all the areas that we need to. I've been working with um, law enforcement um, who has um, been very uh, strategic when it comes to um, handling uh, what, what we do um, because we sort of were away for a little while um, during the pandemic and actually some of the things have actually grown. Uh, domestic violence on campuses was sort of iffy because some of the uh, students, uh, they experienced it on an off-campus um, off campus setting. So we've had to collaborate with um, our ADV, which is um, our local Raleigh chapter, uh, Raleigh-Durham chapter, excuse me. And also we've had to collaborate more with um, NC CASA, just different programs that uh, were just available as resources for um, our students. Um, older and younger that needed help because we do have a student program. I mean, an older adult program that we help as well um, that we assist during these times. But um, during the during the pandemic, and this, like I said, these past couple of years, um, we've not been able to do as much as we would like as a campus community. But we do have collaborations with um, NC State, um, just different, um, just local, um, local and. Um, national programs that have helped keep us afloat, give, give us ideas how to service um, everyone during this particular time. I think this is an awesome segue into our next question, but you mentioned the pandemic and some of the challenges that have come along with having to navigate through um, you know, the period of COVID. So we kind of wanna ask you, what does in current um, outreach and engagement look like? Um, especially in a post-COVID world? And how have you find yourself being able to navigate um, after coming out of a two-year pandemic? Okay, well, it's good that you you, know, you, you said post-pandemic. So we are, I'm, I'm gonna go with that. And we're actually um, post in a major way. So I've actually been able to um, meet students, you know, face-to-face, -face, um, have advocacy and, and plan programs that are actually in person. Right now, just came from, St. Louis, we had the um, the NCADV um, National Conference, and it was you know really good. We had to actually learn to do more self care um, because we all were affected, and as providers and advocates, we have actually um, forgot about 
who's doing the, the providing, who's providing service. So um, we were able to um, just, just picture the future going forward that we're definitely going to be able to um, see people face to face because it definitely has an impact and be able to um, show up, but more so show up after we have been renewed ourselves, revitalization, that was a big part of um, what we're going to be able to do going forward that we'll be able to um, make sure that we uh, engage the community in our addressing this week because we have to address you know the past and what was going on in order to make our um, future um, in engagement and, and the things out actually deal with our right now because it's, it was so critical that um, so many people were just just left out. We're dealing with um, you know more plans of engagement and um, suicide prevention, all the different things that would happen and that our community experiences. We've even reached out to um, the um, neurodiversity, um, people with ASD, and we're going to target people with disabilities um, more so. We're going to just you know reach into our toolbox because we did, you know, we're able to still sustain the things that we did have. So now we're just going to reach in and, you know, take out some things that we don't need. But going forward, we're really excited about, um, you know, just making sure that engagement is um, comprehensive, that we'll be able to include, um, you know, men, the LGBTQ, everyone. We're just going to focus more on providing um, comprehensive services. I love that. Thanks for sharing. I think one of the, the biggest things that many others would be able to resonate with is that the pandemic taught them what has worked and some of the things that they need to build upon. So I love that perspective. All right. So for the next question, I want you to be as honest as possible <laughs> because we really want our incoming grantees and those who are watching to be able to take and learn, right? So what are some things that you wish you knew before becoming a grantee and how would you advise incoming grantees? Wow, that is a good question. Um, I wish I'd known uh, about the trauma aspect um, because I am a behavioral scientist. So I, I, I wanted to, I did not know actually that everything that we do has to come from a trauma-informed lens. And I did not know about the intersectionality of um, sexual assault programs and how being on campus is so key, how having someone to come to, um, you know, it, it's just like, it needs to be more education for, um, I guess I'll say myself, as a grantee um, for programs, we need, you know, I, I just wish there was more education because it's it's a it's a larger space than I thought that it was. I would have been prepared um, more so about, you know, all the different uh, types of services that we could actually provide. So it, it's just, you know, but, but coming in, um, not knowing much, it's actually been sort of a blessing in a way. Um, but I would hope that other grantees coming in would just, just get educated, reach out, find out as much as you can, um, study trauma if you haven't already, because we're, we're, we just, I, I think we use the term so loosely, but um, we, we need to just get into um, study trauma from all different sides um, for people with disabilities, for the LGBTQ, for every place where it intersects with um, people of color and, and depending on your campus, if it's not, um, but get, get involved in knowing that um, intersectionality is, is a real thing. Um, and we need to, you know, especially address the trauma as much as you, because it's trauma every day, just being black anyway, or a person of color. Yeah, yeah. So we, we need to um, be able to, you know, be more knowledge is power. Dr. Austin, you are speaking on so many of the things that we wanted to touch on today. So I thank you for that. Um, but this is flowing in perfectly to all of the things that um, we kind of wanted to touch base on our with our grantees on. But 
going into the next question we have for you, and you spoke a little bit about it, so I would love for you to kind of expand, but when it comes to community response and advocacy, what are some of the trends that you've noticed on your campus and have you spent more time focusing on certain areas versus other? So you did mention that piece about trauma and how it has to be um, something that, you know, grantees can pay a little bit more attention to. Have you noticed that in other areas? Uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed that we, freshmen, freshmen, these are the um, mental health, I'll say, um, and I did mention suicide, suicide ideation and suicidality is so prevalent right now, uh, even down to, you know, I'll, I'll say children that are in middle school, high school, and since we've come up to the college level that they're, you know, it, mental health is, is, is just, it's everything. Our students have suffered so much these past few years. We're, we're dealing with a set of students that got a lot of education, misinformation, miseducation, all these things off the internet. So they've been on lockdown. So mental health is going to be, um, it, it's just something that we, we've got to tap in. We've got to go for it when it comes to putting their, their ability to perform uh, their studies, um, some of the what happens, not just why you're doing this now, but let's look into what happened to you during the pandemic, what happened to you prior to the pandemic, and then what's happening to you now? How are your relationships now? Relationships have suffered, um, and like I said, that's a mental, mental and emotional health. So this is what um, you know. What, what, before we even get to the the what the biggest um, what the most excitement is in the moment, we really have to deal with uh, what happened during this time. We have to, we have to address it. Yeah, yeah, that's real. That's real. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So. Can you also talk to us about some of the uh, gaps in education you've been able to identify or observe um, on your in, in campus culture? And what are some of your plans to address those gaps? And we've kind of talked a little bit about this before, but I'm interested in seeing how you guys have been able to identify those areas and what is your plan in addressing um, those education gaps? Okay, education gaps here. We're we're looking at um, our our biggest thing. I, I did a survey um, last year um, with some returning students. We had a real good um, sexual assault awareness um, prevention program, and one of the gaps that we we noticed that um, students don't they don't understand how to how to address. Um, a violation when something happens and they don't understand um, Title IX, you know, how, what, what, what is, what is um, harassment? You know, our students have not been taught, and I'm, I'm thinking that this probably comes from the uh, high school um, and that bridge, that little time in between. Um, they, they missed out on, you know, which a, a lot of it does have to do with. Um, you know, I guess their secondary education, but they we're, we're looking at students who really don't understand their bodies. They don't understand um, the science of uh, drug abuse and um, <laughs> not just, I'll just say substance. Education is missing when it comes to um, consent, drug use. Um, these students are, uh, what are the things that they're using? They, I think um, we, they're just missing out so much on this. I'll say the, just the scientific uh, biology, how my body works, um, even sexuality. Um, so education definitely is missing on. Um, I have a lot of students telling me that um, I'm bipolar. No, you're not. You probably think you are. So it, they're just missing out on a lot of um, education wise. Our, our students are just, I'll, I'll say subpar when it comes to knowing themselves um, and how we should actually be addressing this as a culture um, that 
our students lack um, education on just who they are biologically, emotionally. That, that, that's a large, a large part of that is missing. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking even their navigation on different systems and education about what um, sexual assault um, actually really is. What is a bystander? Am I contributing? They don't understand porn. They don't understand um, that, you know, that stalking. It's, it's just so many areas that education is needed because, you know, if you don't know, you ask. And then I asked. And then I found out this is where we lack. We lack in just that general um, knowledge of how, of, of who, who we are, our bodies, our minds. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, I think with that, you've, you've definitely touched on what I think a lot of people can identify with and and kind of relate to, right? In in terms of where the gaps are, and thank you for also sharing with us how you guys you know choose to address those those different gaps. And with that being said, what does sustainability then look like for you? And what has it looked like for you and your campus? Okay, well, sustainability is that, you know, let me be able to get to the funds after I um, do a survey. Uh, I, I don't know if any of the um, new grantees are aware, but surveys are really going to help your program. You've got to be able to, once you, once you um, have a program, you've got to participate. It, it looks like the internet. You have got to be social. You've got to find students where they are. Find these people. You've got to be on Snapchat. You've got to be everywhere they are, but not in a way that it pushes them away from you. You know, you, you've got to uh, use hashtags. You've got to be on IG. You've got to be on Facebook. You've got to be everywhere the students are. Um, and then, and that's on the, the, the website. But make sure you get there on campus. Be visible. Make yourself available. Show up in some jeans, ripped jeans, cutouts. You know, you may even want to get a little bold. Come on with a crop top. <laughs> oh. but yeah, hey, be relevant. Okay, be there. I love that. Be visible. Be relevant, and be there. Those are some. Excellent tips for sustainability. <laughs> well, Dr. Austin, this has been great. I think we have learned so much and I know that incoming grantees will really appreciate this valuable information you shared with us. So before we end, I would really love to know what has been your biggest moment of pride? Wow. When we had, last year we had the, um, uh, the man box, we had presenters to come to talk to our uh, where we want to engage young black men um, and basically which included all of our students um, even though you know of course we, we do have a mixed population and um, our young men the VP of um, student affairs um, and the presenter they were all on stage and the young men they just like we want to do this again they enjoyed it they came in they understand the man box they were honest about you know and, and and for me as a mother of five males as well you know that was my biggest sense of pride to know that if we give them the information they're going to use it we just have to make sure that we stay available stay you know present make sure that you know OBW is doing some great things please understand this but what this program um, entails is to be able to, you know, it, it, we're funded to be able to make a difference. Find out what your niche is. And as I said, you know, it's a little personal that I do have five sons. I have a gay son. I have a son with autism. I have my, my other five, four, three. Just be, just be um, prepared because there's something that's going to actually um, hit you and you're going to serve from your heart. And that for me, as I said, it was personal, but this is what it's going to be. We all know someone. We all have someone. 
and we all are someone that's going to have a good moment to shine. And I hope you will gain from this conversation that um, not to be afraid, be fearless, be fierce, go for it. I love that. I love that. Well, folks, there you have it. Um, thank you once again, Dr. Alston, representing from Shaw. This was so informative. I <laughs> love it, representing that HBCU campus pride. So we hope you guys stay tuned for our next peer-to-peer -peer, um, session. All right. All right.